Welcome to Mail Run Monday. Hello. <laughs> Where we go get the mail, which is more of an adventure than you'd think, and answer some of your questions. Whew. So the first question is perfect for setting the stage, and it is, how far is it to the mailbox? And also, do you see any wildlife? So, I don't know, we'll show you if we see any wildlife. I usually do. Do you, Victor? I mean, if you look around the ground right now, you'll start to yeah. tracks for evidence of wildlife. So many, I'll try to put in a clip. Woo! We're, okay, let me show you what we're walking over. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Okay, so this is a boardwalk, and when it's underneath the snow, it's kind of hard to navigate. Not just any boardwalk, by the way. It's the hog walk. Hog walk. Oh boy, only our staff who were here at the end of last summer will know that reference. But yeah, this is the hog walk. And normally it is not part of our mail run, but the ice is not thick enough to safely cross. So we have to hike to the north end of our property um, where there's some open water. Like it's, there's a, a faster moving current there. Um, so it never freezes over. And so we can cross there via a canoe and then hike to our vehicle and then drive to the mailbox. So all in all, this is the longest route to the mailbox. Uh, we It could take two days or two weeks for the ice to be thick enough to cross. So that will make our mail run shorter. But Victor, how long would you say our mail run is this way? Um, Time-wise or like miles or? Both. I'd say this way would probably take us 40 minutes. 40 minutes. With like the jumping in the canoe part. Yeah, and maybe like. And maybe a two miles. You think it's two miles? Okay. There you go. Five miles down the trip. And like I said, if we see any animals, we'll show you that too. If you look up the hill, kind of in this general direction, you can see that there's a path that some rabbits have Bunnies. been taking. It's a lot of snowshoe hair around here. I'm sure if we look around more, we'll see lots of other fun tracks. Yeah. Whew. So here's the fast moving, fast moving. It's not really that fast moving, but it doesn't freeze over. Um, yeah, and then this is um, my dad's cabin that he's renovating right now. And he's got a canoe over here for us and some ice axes. We haven't measured the ice yet. So we're going to be paddling kind of straight ahead there and we're definitely going to have to break through a little bit of ice. Here's our ride. So he's not going to go that far out. <laughs> it's very shallow where he's at right now, but it's not much further and it drops off. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys love to point out the moments where I'm not wearing a life jacket. <laughs> this is not going to be one of those moments. Anytime there's ice and fast moving water, you've got to have your life jacket on. I don't know if you've been introduced to Stride on here before, but your God given name is Victor. Your camp given name is Stride. Is Stride. <laughs>
I need both hands for both these eggs. Hang on. Forget the painter like I, I did. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so that's where we came from. Stride, what were you saying though? Oh, I think we go this way instead of like straight across the river to our neighbor's house. Um, but we go this way because this is breakable ice for one, two, it's safe, and for three, we don't want to uh, disrupt that ice that's forming. Mm. Yeah. We'll keep that to, to let it form as. As fast as it can. So it's safer to walk across faster. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now we go through the woods. Okay. So while we're waiting for the car to warm up, uh, the question is, what is your favorite and least favorite challenge of living up north year round? And I love this question because it's like not just about what is your favorite part, it's what's your favorite challenge, which is an interesting question. Um, do you have a least favorite stride? Um, challenge. Yeah, your least favorite challenge. Um, it's quite frustrating when you're working on a project or you're, mm. something breaks and you don't physically have the part you need to go get it. You have to yeah. drive two hours to go get it. Yeah, um, that's That's a, a big challenge that we see day to day. But I would say that one of the greatest challenges is kind of on the same same page is where like you have to be adaptable and like be able to be creative and find out new ways to do things. I don't know. Yeah. 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 But wait, so is that your favorite challenge or least favorite? Both. Okay. So I'd say that it's both. It's a two for. So it's maybe rewarding. It's rewarding to be able to say, hey, we weren't able to have the right part for the project but we were able to find a way around it and make it work yeah i would say my favorite challenge so far has been um like learning how to just do all of the things that i miss like for myself so like for example we like sushi and ramen we've just learned how to do it for ourselves and like i have fun doing my nails like i've just learned to do it myself uh we missed having a gym, so we just made a gym, like built a gym ourselves. <laughs> um, just like learning how, and yeah, I guess it volleys off of what you were saying, like having to be creative, like come up with your own solutions to stuff. Um, that's been my favorite challenge, and my least favorite challenge of living here year round. Um, I don't know. I don't like the outhouse, man. It's just not for me. It's fine. I can do it, but if you've ever been sick before and needed a bathroom, an outhouse in February is not it. Okay, so the next question is, have you had any memorable slash scary animal experiences? I wouldn't say that we've had anything scary happen. I wouldn't. Stride, would you say anything scary has happened? We've had memorable things. Um, in my lifetime or up here? Up here. Scary. Really? No. But memorable, yes. And I was like thinking, man, we haven't, maybe we don't answer this question, haven't really had anything, but Stride reminded me that we have had a few things. Like we had a wolf uh, that was, there's clearly something wrong with this wolf, like skinny, alone, um, but like right in, like right in front of the cabin. This was like two falls ago, I think.
And that was crazy. Like the wolf was standing 15 feet away from me. And then a second time I was coming down the trail in camp and I stop and like from me, I was with Arlo. From me and Arlo, this wolf was in the woods staring at us like 10 feet away. And for a second, the three of us, Arlo, me, and the wolf just stood still staring at each other. And then Arlo decided it was go time and went after this wolf and chased it for a while. And it was, who was in camp? It was you, me, Nemo, Nemo and Gio. Gio. Yeah, everybody at camp has nicknames, right? So Nemo and Gio are not their real names. Just like Penny and Stride are not our real names. But, um, so it was all of us in camp, like chasing Arlo around, yelling, Arlo, Arlo, Arlo. But the wolf got away. And then, but tell them about last spring with the moose. So we were doing a mail run, similar to like what we're doing today. Yeah, it's true. At um, nighttime, like sunset time. Yeah, right around in the evening. Yeah. And we're on uh, the road that we go get our mail on. Yes. And this big moose kind of wanders out. Um, and we, so I stopped the truck and we're just kind of sitting there and watching it. And she kind of moses up to the truck, the front of the truck where uh, kind of on Ashley's driver's side. The passenger side. Passenger side. And she just kind of leans up against the truck and she stays there for like, I don't know, 10 minutes. She just leans. Yeah, like literally leaning into my truck. There, there she again. No scared or anything. Again, there was something wrong with this animal. Um, she was covered in ticks. I don't, I don't know if she ended up making it. She was in pretty rough shape. When, when big mammals like that lean against, like when I was growing up, we had a Clydesdale, and um, at the end of her life, she was like leaning against the barn, like the barn was holding her up. Something. Something's not right, you know. Um, those are the ones that come to mind. You had one more. What was your other one? Uh, we were on a trip to Rose Lake at the oh. Stereo Portage. Yeah, we had. And there's a, a group in front of us. They were that were coming off of Rose Lake, so going into Duncan. We had 24 hours off, and we thought we would go into the Boundary Waters. We had Arlo. She was just a little puppy at the time. Come on, girl. So we're at this portage, stairway portage. And this group is, we hear like some whooping and hollering, and then as soon as we get to the landing, we see this bear with a, a food bag in his mouth, and he's just taken off into the woods. And you have like three or four people chasing it, screaming and yelling. It was quite the, quite the scene. It was pretty funny. I swear, beware at the the stairway portage into like going from Duncan into Rose Lake because there's a bear that just lives there. Like that is that bear's gig is stealing food packs. Cause didn't that happen to one of our camper groups this summer? Yeah, so we had a group of boys go out in the woods and on that same portage. We run a wilderness camp for boys. And they, so they were on a trip. They claimed that the bear was able to open the pack and take something out of it. Oh yeah, no, but it was really polite. Like the bear took their food bag, like very, like a bear could rip apart that pack, but they, the bear very respectfully like opened, opened it, the top took of the it. Marshmallows or something. Yeah, took the bag of marshmallows and then just left as if it were like, look, I understand the balance of nature here. I'm just gonna take what's owed to me and leave. <laughs> that was funny. The kids thought that was true story or not. It's good. I don't. Yeah, who knows? But stairway portage. Beware of the bear that lives there. Yeah, I think those are our most memorable experiences and we're almost to the mailbox. Mail's here. Okay, question is, would you be ready for the apocalypse out there? Have you thought about this question before? Uh, maybe a little. A little bit? A little bit, how about you? Uh, when it was, when, when COVID was like 
starting and we had to like cancel camp and it felt kind of like the world was crumbling. I did think about it. I was like, would we be ready? And my answer was no. Like, no, we would not be ready. I don't think we'd be ready either. It's, it's so hard to grow enough food up here. Yeah. We have such a short growing window. And I'm not an experienced enough gardener. Like, I have a garden. I've grown some things, like onions and peppers and tomatoes and what I, like kale, lettuce. But ugh, we would be, we wouldn't be thriving if the apocalypse came. But we would probably be safe from like whatever, well, I don't know. What sort of things cause an apocalypse? Like zombies? The so zombies. We'd be safe from those for a while, I think. Like any sort of like nuclear plant explosion? I don't know. Yeah. Atomic I bombs. mean, if Mother Nature just decided, no, I'm done with these humans, like nobody's safe, but. Um, I think we stand as good a chance as anybody in a lot of ways. That doesn't mean I think we'd be ready, but like we don't rely, like we're semi off grid, right? So like winters, we're good, like keeping us warm. Um, you would have to start hunting, like you you need to like. You'd really have to hone in those skills. You'd really have to hone in the hunting skills. Arlo would become the hunting dog that I think she could, I think she could be a good hunting dog. She's up for it. I think she's up for it. Um, yeah, the gardening thing would have to get amped up. But I did think about it. But like, ev does anybody else think about this? Whenever I buy books, I'm not a prepper or anything like that. But whenever I buy books or like consider buying books, I'm like, what if the world ended and I didn't have access to libraries or Amazon or local bookstores anymore? I'd be so happy that I had this book. Because like, think about that. If the apocalypse came and the world ended, I would want all of the stories. Yeah. You know what I mean? We'd have to... We need solar panels. We'd have to find some sort of light for candles. I can make candles. Some bees. I've made candles. Oh, I would love to have bees. See, okay, the potential is there. The potential is there to thrive. Yeah. Should an apocalyptic situation occur, we're just not quite ready. But I think we're in pretty good condition, like compared to people that are in cities, maybe. I don't know. Th those people have community, like they've got a lot of people. Maybe that's a problem. It all depends on the type of apocalypse we're dealing with. Yeah. All right, last question. If you didn't live in the Northland, where would you live? That's a really tough question. Um, because I, like, this is the place for me. Clearly, we're building a house here. <laughs> um, I've lived in a lot of different places. I've lived in Alabama. I've lived in Florida. I've lived in Wisconsin. I've lived in Pennsylvania. I think that's it. Um, I don't know. What about you? Do you know? Where you live? I'm kind of a winter person. I like winter sports, whether it's ice fishing or yeah. skiing. I'm a winter person too. Uh, and so if I could choose a place that allows me to do those things, whether it's Maine or somewhere out west like Utah or Colorado, I guess I could do those too, but I think Minnesota's really good. <laughs> you look so angry when you're thinking. I'm squinting. The sun is in my eyeballs. So you live in Maine? Or like a winter place? Yeah. Maine would be cool. I mean, I've never been to Maine. I'd like to go to Maine. Um, oh, that's so tough. I don't know. Don't make me choose. If I didn't live in the Northland, I would live... What qualifies as Northland? <laughs> I think the Midwest. The Midwest no. is the Northland? No. The, I feel like the Midwest... I saw something the other day about people, um, it was like a map of Minnesota, like the state and like the whole state, and it was like divided into sections and like laterally into sections. And the question was like, 
which sections qualify as up north. And the majority of people said that everything like above the lateral section that includes the metro area, like Minneapolis, St. Paul, everything above that, like even the section below Duluth was con considered up north. And before I looked at the comments of people picking, I surely thought like, well, naturally, like Grand Marais and above, that's up north. I mean, I think I'd consider Duluth up north. Do you have some up northy places? Most people say the, the same. Lateral line from Duluth and up. Yeah. So like the Brainerd area. So I guess when they asked if you didn't live in the Northland, where else would you live? I thought they meant like northland like up north i didn't think midwest but i can tell you all sorts of places i wouldn't live this is this is my favorite place i agree i don't know maybe like one of the like little oh you know i'd live at that chateau we visited in france that's a good one that's a good one have to learn to speak french but yeah okay final answer okay french. Let's go back home. Stray decided to order 30 pounds worth of bird seed. Take your house tape back. <laughs> That's the only reason. <laughs> Do it for the bird. And I honestly don't know what's in this box. I ordered a bunch of stuff and it was all supposed to be here. You know what? Maybe that's the most frustrating challenge is the mail is somewhat unreliable. I was expecting stuff. And it ain't here. And you get all excited, you know what I mean? I ordered pajamas, and I want my pajamas. Oh my. They're not here though. But my dad's LL Bean order is here. Don't Thank worry. goodness. The man that's not even here. <laughs> all right, back at the canoe. And your 30 pounds of bird seed. We did get something pretty cool for the birds. We're workshopping it. There's some minor technical difficulties with it, but Stry, do you want to tell them what it is? What? The cool thing that we ordered for the birds. Tell them what it is. The cool thing we ordered for them? Oh my goodness. It's a bird feeder with a camera in it so that you can see the birds coming this winter. Yeah, I'm good at pedaling backwards. I backpedal out of all sorts of situations. You good? Just for reference, we're here and we hiked all the way around here to get to there, right over there. That's where we live, right? So we hiked all the way around here just so that we could paddle here and then drive all the way down this peninsula. Whew. So now we hike back. You want to get your steps in just come visit us for a little bit but that concludes the first mail run monday um, if you have any questions for the next mail run monday please leave them in the comments below and we'll answer them
guys guess what the package was. It's my pajamas. What do we think? All right, well, Moses the cat just got a new box to play with. That's exciting for him. Uh, but thanks for tagging along on this Mail Run Monday. Uh, leave your questions for next Mail Run Monday in the comments below, and we'll see you then.